Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. This is Madden 18 on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we've got a pair of wide receivers who certainly want to be targeted throughout the game. It's Beckham's Giants going up against Evans' Buccaneers. So now let's head on over to rainy Raymond James Stadium in Tampa as we welcome in our announcing crew of Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Larry, it's something that Floridians are all too familiar with as the rain continues to fall here at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. With the echoes of cannon blast still ringing in our ears from the north end zone, the Bucks were introduced a moment ago, and they are all set as their guys will do battle with the New York Giants. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Giants ready to start their initial drive of the game. They'll be led out by their two-time Super Bowl winning quarterback, Eli Manning, in season number 14 now. Had another nice season a year ago. His sixth 4,000-yard campaign, but even more importantly, got his Giants back into the playoffs with an 11-5 mark after three straight losing seasons. Throwing on first down is Manning. And his first look is incomplete. They were looking for Marshall that time, and that'll bring up second down. And the starting offense now for the Giants. Brandon Marshall's always been productive in the NFL. It doesn't matter what team he has played for, but now that he's moving from the Jets to the Giants, and he had a little bit of a down year in 2016 with the Jets, count on that competitive fire to really come to the front. They'll pair him with Odell Beckham Jr., give him two large receivers on the outside who can flat out run and create home run throws. A first carry now for Paul Perkins. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. The defensive starters now for Tampa Bay and against Chicago in week two. Four takeaways for this group. Two fumbles and two interceptions. But this was a defense that got better in the second half of 2016. It looks like it's carrying over to 2017. The numbers that they're putting up now and the pressure they're putting in the face of opposing quarterbacks, led by Gerald McCoy in the defensive front, that allows for that good action on the back end where they are taking the ball away. And if they take it away, you can limit teams like Atlanta and Carolina in their own division. Play action. Manning. And he's got a man open. That's Marshall. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Here's Perkins on first down. And an alley to run. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only they're controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Hey, 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 
They go with Perkins again. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. Credited with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action. Hit them over the top. Manning going to give to Perkins on the draw. And he'll be stopped up quickly here at the 38. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Now a play fake. Manning, he's going to float this one deep right side. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. Well, they took the shot, didn't get it. There's definitely a difference here because they had a chance to get seven, maybe eight if they pushed it. Instead, they'll likely settle for three. Yeah, opening drive, holding him to three. Psychologically, maybe a win for the defense. The fourth-year man from LSU, Brad Wing, to punt it away. Adam Humphreys deep for Tampa Bay. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Jameis Winston bringing out the Tampa Bay Bucks. Week two, looking back, Charles, he was 18 of 30, just over 200 yards and a touchdown, and no turnovers for him. I noticed a little emphasis there on the no turnovers. There, I know there's been some issues there in the past. The big reason why, he never thinks that a play is over. He always thinks he can create something, maybe when it's not there, and he'll make ill-advised throws or runs where he'll drop the football. In this game, he didn't do that. And when he takes care of it, Tampa Bay is going to be awfully hard to beat. They go play action here on first down. Well, he's going to take a shot right away. And that's caught inside the 35. It's a big play. Winston Evans, 51 yards. Today's receivers in the NFL, they're the complete package nowadays. We know they can run. We know they can catch. But they have those big frames now. So oftentimes, they just out-physical guys downfield and go up and catch the football. And we saw a big gain as a result on that play. for Doug Martin. Might have gotten this one down to the 28, and that's all. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And we get a glance now at the Buccaneer offense. On draft night, I have to admit, I was very surprised to see O.J. Howard still available at number 19 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think they were shocked, too, because they thought he might go as high as number four in the draft. The perfect combination of being able to block in the line of scrimmage, run downfield, make catches, and run routes and get away from people, they had to take him when he was still available. Now Jameis on second down. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. Oh, he almost had it for the pick. A great chance there for the interception in the end zone. Instead, third down. And quickly the starting 11 now for the New York defense. George Jenkins was always thought of as a first-round talent coming out of college. And while he went in the second round, he got better and better in his years with the Rams because of his ability to track the football. In fact, when he got his hands on the ball, it often went the other way for touchdowns. And in his first year in 2016 with the Giants, he continued to ascend at the cornerback position, locked down some of the better receivers in the league, and his confidence grew with each and every game. On third down, Winston. He dropped it. Couldn't hang on in the end zone. So no six points incomplete. 
Well, he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. Here's Nick Folk now on for the field goal. From the right hash, this from 45 yards away. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalpost, and the Bucks take a 3-0 lead. So the opening drive for them here on their home turf results in a field goal. Now that's the way you want to get things started. Your stadium, your crowd, you've got the ball, Put points on the board first and let everyone start to celebrate. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Here's the giant offense now making their way back out onto the field. And you know, their previous possession, they were able to move the football but still wound up punting in the end. You know, in 2016, Carolina had a 20-play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes. And remember how it ended? In a punt. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? You just don't see that happen every day. And this one may be not quite that bad, but still, you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long. Agreed. Now a play fake here on first down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Odell Beckham that time. And it's second down. But not to get too overcritical there, because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. On second down, Perkins. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, four C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. On play action, it's Manning. Beckham complete. A big 30-yard play on third. Well, that catch just gives us another reason to praise Odell Beckham Jr. Off to an incredible start to his NFL career. Three Pro Bowls, three straight Pro Bowls, obviously, and first giant to do that in more than 50 years, Charles. And how about the numbers that he's put up also? 1,300 or more yards and 10 or more touchdowns in each of those three seasons. saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Second down following the incompletion. <laughs> Throwing again. Manning. And bringing it in right side here. Beckham. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Manning able to find OBJ there for a Giants first down. Now this trio that New York has compiled, Brandon Marshall, Sterling Shepard, and of course Odell Beckham Jr., fits right into head coach Ben McAdoo's attack. They led the league in three wide receiver sets in 2016.
Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. On play action, now Manning. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. They were trying to get it there to Sterling Shepard. That'll bring up second down. Can't fault the offensive line for that incompletion at all. He had all day to throw the football. Their alarm clocks went off early today, didn't they? Absolutely, they did. He was surveying, surveying, finally let it go, but incomplete. Manning again here on second and ten. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that'll pull you out of that spot they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. Into the red zone now. Manning. Oh, that was dangerous. Throw it into coverage, almost picked. But instead, they'll keep it on second down. I know in every game we do, we talk about momentum. That was a momentum play lost. And now there could be a letdown because they didn't get the interception. Yeah, you could almost hear the collective gasp on the sideline as he could not come up with that football. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. Back to the air on second down. It's Manning. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're speaking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Now Manning. Wrapped up, taken down, back in the 25. On fourth down, off goes Manning, and on comes the Giants kicker, Aldrich Rosas, for the field goal try. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. I have to believe that if you're the team trying to block a field goal, you don't mind this weather. All right, the rain probably is going to help you because so many things can go wrong for the guys trying to kick the ball. It's as simple as maybe you just lose your footing. You kind of spin out like a tire in the snow, not getting traction, and you create a space and someone comes through. And I think for everybody, snapper, holder, kicker, everything slows down maybe a fraction of a second. And a fraction of a second and a field goal try, that can be all the difference. I love how you describe that. Everything slows down, but it's a deliberate slowdown, isn't it? Yep. Because everyone's trying to be more careful and more deliberate to make sure it's executed. Jameis now on first down. Nowhere to 
escape, and he goes down. Dalvin Tomlinson coming up the middle, gets him there for a loss of about nine. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Second down, Martin. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. 12 yards is the pick up there, and that's going to lead to a third down. It seemed like the situation was second and a mile to go for a first down, which screams what? Throw the football. you got to pass in order to try and pick up that kind of yardage. But in this case, they ran a tendency breaker because the tendency is for defenses to be out there and be set up for a pass. So you break tendency and actually run the football. That changes everything because if you're able to find a crease, you often have bigger guys working against smaller guys downfield. They picked up excellent yardage there to bring up a third down. Winston from the gun on third down. He hits Rodgers in the flat. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. It's lining up first and ten. Winston with a give to Martin. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there. Second down. And if you're the defense and those D tackles, you like that they're trying to run the football here against your 4-3, don't you? Yeah, because they tend to eat things up because they are so strong and physical, and especially when they play with leverage where they get lower than the offensive linemen and control them. And what I love about the good defensive tackles, they can play over the guards, they can slide and play over the center. Nobody in the offense likes that day when they have to deal with those guys. Sure, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back right around the 44. Olivier Vernon in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. He didn't get rid of the football there, took the sack. Although that's easier said than done. He can't just chuck the thing sideways into the seats. No, he really can't because you're not afforded total protection as a quarterback. You have to get outside of the tackle boxes as defined by the NFL, meaning wherever your tackles operate normally, get outside of that. And the ball that you throw has to get back to at least the line of scrimmage. Otherwise, you face an intentional grounding call. Winston needing a big play after the sack as he leads the Bucks up on third and long. Ready. Move ready. Working out of the gun, Winston. And he's going to go down again. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback, right in the face of him, puts him down. Now the six-year man from Cal, Brian Anger, on to kick. Back deep for the Giants, Dwayne Harris. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. The Buccaneers defense, we watch them get set to go.
They fake the handoff. Now Manning. He's going to launch this thing. Well, oh, this is taken in. It's complete. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz, made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged because now they know there are going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback. So they got their assignments down pat and kept them away from him. And he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now for a really good strike. Perkins on the give from Manning. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Decent chunk of yardage still left here. Second and seven. Again, they go to Perkins. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. So just a lone field goal in this first quarter of play. 3-0 is our score. We'll return to Tampa after this message. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's the Giants with the football here as we begin quarter number two. They're on the march, but facing a third down here. Shotgun now for Manning. Pressure, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back right around the 44. William Golston in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. Here's Brad Wing now as he'll kick it away for the second time. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. And a look now at the game so far for Jameis Winston. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Now he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. Here's Martin as they begin on the ground. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Again, it's Martin. And he'll get about three as he takes this up near the 25. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. 
Jameis to throw it. He finds Humphreys. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but they have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks. Those guys are worth their weight in gold. First down, here's the run with Martin. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. They run it again with Martin, and he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of their yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. A first down throw for Winston. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was trying to find Deshaun Jackson that time. And now it's second down. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in. But it is hard to adjust to a pass thrown a little bit behind you. That one was. All the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. Winston gives to the tailback, Martin. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. The Bucks on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and 11. From the shotgun, it's Winston. And this is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Here's Brian Anger now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. And New York set to take the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? play fake. Manning. Open man right side is Ingram. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion.
Manning to throw on second down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And heavy contact, he is knocked down hard at the 28. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. I think it's okay there they didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. The Giants on third down, two for five to this point. Here it's third and two. Now whistles here and a flag down. I think a Giant jumped early. That's going to set him back five yards. Still third down. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Throwing now is Manning, and that is incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Here's Brad Wing now as he's on to punt for New York. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They start the drive with Martin. And that gets him a little room as he'll take this up over the 10-yard line. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. We talk about setting a tone or beginning a drive. That run was absolutely textbook. <laughs> I'm telling you, partner, now they're not just thinking about an easy drive. They're thinking about maybe taking it downfield. Yeah, started at their two. Now they've got a heavy amount of breathing room. Tenth carry here for Martin. And they'll bring him down right around the 13. Two yards on the pickup there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Just get back to the line of scrimmage, if that. And with a flag on the field. And that one looks to be in the area where someone was held. Holding offense. You need your wide receivers as blockers. Sometimes they get a hold. The big runs are often a result of what they do on the perimeter. In this case, got caught holding, and this one will come back. Winston. Bearing this one out for Evans. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Landon Collins. 
And a huge return as he'll take this one all the way down inside the 30-yard line. And Brandon, the passing game for both of these teams is going to be affected as the game goes along. It's not looking like the rain's going to let up anytime soon. So that might mean a few more wobbly passes and wide receiver slips. And this one winds up getting intercepted. Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading onto the field again. They haven't been able to get him on track. They haven't been able to get this offense on track. No points so far. Maybe it's time to start doing a few different things. Throwing the ball a little bit. Maybe featuring other people touching it for a while. And then you've got a chance to come back to him when things have changed a little bit. They have to make an adjustment. Well, still time for him here as we sit in the second quarter. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. So after the INT, it's Manning. To the sideline, wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. I'm pretty sure the Giants saw big success for Sterling Shepard coming out of Oklahoma. They could see him in their offense working in the middle of the field and making big catches. Second only to Michael Thomas last year among rookies in receptions, yards, and touchdowns. Second down, here's Manning. And now the ball comes out. Manning lost it, and it's picked up by the Buccaneers. He's at the 50, and he will take this across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. Well, Eli Manning coughs up the football, and usually does a pretty good job of taking care of it. What's he been in double digits and fumbles three times in his career? Yeah, after 2015, I think he had three years of 10 plus. Yeah, but, but one of the things about his offense and how he's functioned throughout his career, they throw the ball downfield a lot, which means what? You hold it longer yeah. in the pocket. That can affect things sometimes. More time in the pocket means more chances for someone to get to you. Winston gives to Martin on the draw. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple of yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. counter with Martin and he's going to get this one down near the 45 yard line he'll pick up only a yard there and it'll leave him with a third and seven back to back runs I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain minimal yardage and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up the Bucks on third down two for five to this point this is third and seven From the gun, Winston. Toward the sideline, and he will have the first down as he was able to keep the feet in bounds. Eight yards there on a first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down in bounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. Winston now to throw on first down. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. 
That was close to a big play. Just a little bit too far that he was led. He caught it but couldn't stay in bounds, Charles. Yeah, I'm not very good at these sort of things, but I have to believe the farther you are downfield, the less your margin for error in throwing the ball, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. Yeah, so they gave it a good effort there. Really tried. Just couldn't complete it. They'll run it now out of the gun. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. The Bucks on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 11. To throw, Winston. Open man is Godwin, it's complete. A very solid gain of 27. And that was a heck of a shot right there by Jameis Winston. Boy, he has a superior right arm, doesn't he? You saw him play baseball. Yeah, he's actually a switch hitter in baseball. Outfielder and then, of course, a very hard-throwing pitcher. That's translated well in the National Football League. That it has. When he has to make that throw on a line, he's got plenty of arm to do it. They go play action here on first down. And incomplete, he dropped it in the end zone. They may be snapping a ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. A second down throw for Winston. His pass caught at the four. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We'll come back to Tampa after this timeout. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, we'll send you to Orlando and Larry Ridley as he'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. But no touchdowns. These guys need to give Larry some touchdowns to talk about. Things are too easy for him right now back in the studio. Come on, guys. Help the man out. Give him something to talk about. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Jameis again. And this is going to be incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow... Incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. And Fultz's kick is good. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So give them three there. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they couldn't punch it in. And credit this defense, too. That was the old bend but don't break approach. But it kept the offense out of the end zone. Kick this one away, and off it goes. The return man here, Dwayne Harris. 
Oh, and now he bowls him over. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. They've given him some touches. They haven't had a lot of success on the ground. Do you maybe keep going to that well, or do you mix it up more? I think you mix it up more, try to loosen things up. Get the defense to react to other people, other plays, but don't forget about it. That's your horse. You know, Secretariat lost twice in his career. <laughs> so educational. That's very true, kids. Look it up. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Throwing on first down is Manning. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Well, one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Manning will try again on second down. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. And 15 yards there on the catch and run. Manning, a dump off to the flat for Perkins. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. It'll be a gain of eight yards. Throwing is Manning, and it'll be a second down. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. They'll get a couple yards on that one. And that is going to set up a third and one. Again, they'll throw with Manning. And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's fourth. And there's a good opportunity to just want to ride there, a drop pass. I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs. Here's Brad Wing now. He's been terrific so far. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted. Spotted at the 14-yard line. And we turn our focus to Doug Martin. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. They set up the screen to Martin. And now running right through it. They'll get four there out of the screen and it's second down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner. Everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. Jameis on second down. Throw right side caught by O.J. Howard. And he'll go out of bounds across the 35-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. On draft night, I kept wondering, why is O.J. Howard still on the board? And he ended out at Tampa at number 19, and they're ecstatic to have this guy. He ran 4-5-1. Actually, the first time that the Bucs have ever drafted a tight end in round number one, and they got a good one. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. On first and 10, Winston. 
But he's got the hook up here to Deshaun Jackson. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Again, it's Winston. And they're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. Offense. So flag for the contact, pass interference. And I know that you're going to look at me and roll your eyes, and rightfully so, because you know what I'm going to say. Doesn't the defender have a right to the football as well? No, I just, I don't like defenders. <laughs> That's because you spent too much time with me. Okay, I'll side with you on this one. This is the correct call. So the offense has it first and 10. They'll throw again. Winston. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Second down now after the incompletion. To the air again with Winston. And break. The tight end's got it. And before they can run this third down play, we're going to get a timeout as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. The Bucks on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and four. Working out of the gun, Winston. He hits Rodgers in the flat. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. And Folk's kick is good. And that will make our score 9 to nothing. It's a little bit of time left here in the second quarter, but they get the field goal near the end of the first half to expand that lead. Yeah, that's got to feel good, but they can't let up. Now on the kickoff, they've got to make sure they don't give up a big return or big yardage to set up the other team for one last chance to score themselves. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. 
This one taken from the seven. And he'll take this across the 25. Couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. The drive starts with a run by Perkins. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. Second down following the run. Here's Manning to throw. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. So we've hit halftime here in Tampa with a box out in front. As we will toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with Larry Ridley with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Buccaneers are up right now and are looking to keep up the pressure moving forward. The Giants didn't play their best, and they'll need to be at their best now to come back. All right, let's get straight to it. Here's some highlights from the first half. Third down from the 45. Hunter is going to push his way to the QB here. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. as a huge loss in yardage. Okay, Larry, thank you. No touchdowns in our first half. What will we see in half number two? Time to find out. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. On the return, it's Ryan Smith. And down he goes just shy of the 25. Now, penalty marker is down. Let's see what that's about. Yeah, this is going to put them back with a not great field position. So they really got zero benefit at all, right? Sometimes you can absorb a penalty when you get a big return. Then the penalty brings it back, but you still have great field position. As you pointed out, not in this case. taken down just shy of the 20. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. So second and medium, second and five now. Now Winston. He's got his tight end over the middle, O.J. Howard. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. 
O.J. Howard's career numbers at Alabama are not going to blow you away considering his talent. But the national championship game against Clemson, the one they won, oh, my God, yeah. what a night he had. That's the game that I remember from his college career. Over 200 yards, two touchdowns. The big reason, if not the biggest reason, they won that football game. They'll run it. Here's Martin. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. So it'll be first down here after the run. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to float this one deep right side. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. Ten yards still left on second down. Watch tight, watch tight. Tight here right, tight here right. Ready, move ready. The first carry here for Jaquiz Rogers. He takes this for three to the 29. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The Bucks on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This is third and seven. Here's Winston. And that is incomplete. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Anger is on to punt, and he gets this one away. Giants offense now getting set to start the third quarter. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> In his own end zone, it's Manning. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's into the clear. He's at the 50. He's at the 30, 20, 10, and all the way in. Touchdown, New York. Evan Ingram, 98 yards. And the Giants able to get this back within a touchdown. And that's the type of play that will give your sideline some juice a long touchdown pass. And it's like a bolt of lightning, isn't it? That suddenness of that play brings everyone to their feet in the stadium, and he takes it all the way to the end zone. Give him credit for making that type of a play call, even more credit for how they executed it. Aldrich Rosas on for the extra point. And they're back within a couple at 9-7 now. 
Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Rosas now to kick this one away. This is taken at his four. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And a look now at the game so far for Jameis Winston. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it's struggled. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When, <laughs> when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground. But that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. Play fake to Martin. Now Jameis. That's complete, middle of the field to Humphreys. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Tote for the workhorse, Martin. And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Now Martin. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Call it an eight-yard gain. Much better shape now on third and just a yard. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. The Bucks on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. From the gun, Winston. And this is going to be incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decide to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So it's an empty possession, and as a kicker, not the way you want to start your day's work. And now each team's missed a field goal here so far, Brandon, so apparently neither guy is immune. And the Giants ready to come out now. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time, see if the defense, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. 
And you would have thought they would have been ready the yeah, last that's time. That's I mean, true. that's what you work on all the time. Make sure that no one gets behind you. That's the cardinal sin of defense, not giving up the long pass. They did. Let's see how they adjust. Well, now they'll start three yards shy of midfield after that long 57-yard miss. They'll let Perkins carry to start the drive. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Now Manning throwing on second down. Wide open, it's Marshall complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Manning the throw on second down. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds incomplete. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. The Giants on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This will be a tough third and 18. Manning. And he's going to be hit and taken down. Back right around the 48 yard line. William Golston able to disrupt yet another pass play. His third sack of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game. The way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Here's Brad Wing now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. They go play action here on first down. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds incomplete. He was trying to find O.J. Howard, and that'll bring up second down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree, 
as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. So they run it on second down. Now let's see what third down brings here for the offense. Here's Martin, and he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Third and two, right? So this is a situation where low man has got to win at the line of scrimmage, but it's not just the low man winning. It's the low man who's winning with some force, and they had that to pick up the first down. Barely picking it up, but they did. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Jameis to throw it. He's got his man on the crossing route. And a big collision there as he winds up flat on his back. And that one results in 35 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Carry number 20 here for Martin. And he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. And third quarter here, you've got the lead. This is where that strong run game can really benefit you. Stayed in bounds there, kept the clock going. I like all the points you just made there. And if you throw the football and it's incomplete, now you've stopped the clock and you've helped out the guys on the other side of the ball. So keep it in the hands of those runners. Keep moving it. Keep grinding clock. Now whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. And that'll set him back five. Still second down. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. They'll run it here. This is Rodgers. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. So third down now. They need the 27-yard line for a first. From the shotgun, it's Winston. And the giant rush gets home as down he goes. Jay Bromley in there to get him for a loss of nine, and that'll lead to fourth down. Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number, and we can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. Here's Brian Anger now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today.
And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Eli Manning and company getting set here as they head back onto the field. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent. Just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader. Making sure that you're playing well and not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you're judged. Mm -hmm. How big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far. They'll like that. I just want you to know that you agreeing with me, that's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. Are you touched? <laughs> He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. He finds some open field here. Takes this up just short of the 30, but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle. Nice move. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. And some options here for the offense on second and two. Manning now to throw. And he's hit and taken down. Eli sacked. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Third and long for the Giants and Eli following the sack. Play action. Manning. He'll let it go deep for Beckham. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. <laughs> I'm laughing to myself because I could just hear in film session. But coach. I was throwing to Dodell Beckham Jr. Of course I thought he was open. <laughs> They'd love to go deep downfield to him, though. Such a threat. Yeah, a rare incompletion because most of the time we expect him to actually come up with the catch. The punter wing is on as he sends this one away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. And now loose football, fumble, Martin lost it. And the Giants have it, it's picked up. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. It's been a good one so far, just a two-point game here as we get set for quarter number four. Now Manning. His throw incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Right, right, right. 
Manning again here on second and ten. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. The Giants on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and ten. Working from the gun, Manning. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Look at this. It's the former Giant, Robert Ayers. In there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Brad Wing now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Doug Martin now gearing up to go again here on offense. And as we peer at the numbers, he got off to a struggling start, but since then really found his rhythm. And I think that comes together with not just the halftime adjustments, but just that quiet confidence. If you just keep doing the things you've been working on, eventually there will be creases. You know, find those gaps in the defense, keep working on them, and maybe what didn't happen very well for you in the beginning of the game, it starts to open up as the game moves on. They run, Martin, and not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Brandon's all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lento. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> and he'll go out of bounds across the 35-yard line. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh shot of downs. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as... I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. Fresh set of downs here. And off comes to Martin. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. They give to Martin. <laughs> And some nifty running there. Ultimately, it doesn't get him a whole lot, but it does take him to the 45. Push the five. Face mask. Defense. Trailing in the fourth this close of a game, that's a penalty you just can't afford. It's an absolute killer, and it's one that drives coaches and teammates insane. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. <laughs> Following the penalty, Martin. And this time they were ready for him as he's taken down at the line of scrimmage. 
call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. The reception good for seven. It's third down. When we talk about Harvard, you know we're going to talk about academics, but in this case, let's talk about a big year Cameron Braid had in 2016, the tight end. Finished with 57 catches, 660 yards, and also eight scores. Let's see if they can convert here on third and three. Now Rodgers. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Brandon, this can be so demoralizing for a defense. They've had two opportunities to get off the field. They haven't gotten it done. So now your coordinator, he's going to call every blitz that he has, any type of exotic, something that they haven't seen before. And he's also telling the defensive lineman, don't worry about holding people up. Just get in gaps and try and make a big play. And not only not getting off the field on two opportunities, clock continuing to run. Play fake. Winston. And some room to work. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. It'll be a gain of nine, and that'll make it second and short. Second down throw for Winston. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Mike Evans, a 20 yard touchdown. And the Bucks are going to add on to their lead. And that touchdown ends a streak, for lack of a better word, of three field goals that they put on the board previously. They finally cracked the code. Yeah, they've been down there. They've been in enemy territory, as you said. They just hadn't been able to punch it in until that point. Nick Folk for the point after. And that makes it a nine-point game. So that drive goes eight plays, and it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks. kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded at the two. And a good return. He's across the 35-yard line right around the 36. And now out come the Giants. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Fake the handoff. Now Manning. And now the ball comes out. Manning lost it. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And he will score. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. 
The offense, they've had some sloppy moments. Sloppy there again on that one, and it could be the backbreaker. From a defensive perspective, if the offense is going to be sloppy, you've got to take advantage of that. That's what they've done all game long. So they're going to go for two. Winston now after the fumble recovery. And he's got it. So the two-point conversion is good, and they add on to their fourth-quarter lead. So a big play there, not only the fumble return for the touchdown, then they get the two-point try. And you know, for the defense, though, they were just over there sitting on the field. They had to rush out to try to defend that. You know, it's funny. They actually practice situations that they call sudden change when the team turns it over. I guarantee you no one practices a fumble return for a touchdown like that, and now someone goes for two. Really good strategy by them putting them in that situation. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And let's just say they're going to be looking to start over on this drive. A few moments ago, they were in the exact situation, but their first play led to a fumble that was returned for six. Yeah, you definitely have to have a short memory to play in the NFL. you got to remember what you did wrong so you don't repeat it. But you can't dwell on it because then you will repeat it, and that's what you don't want to do. down Manning over the middle and it's caught Brandon Marshall and he's able to take this one up to the 35 yard line seven yards the pickup on the pitch and catch decent start to the drive but let's face it they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores yeah they're going to run their two minute offense here in this game but this is for future games can they get better and be ready for the next time hopefully with a chance to win so they complete the pass and now they face a second down Shotgun now for Manning. And that is incomplete here. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. The Giants on third down, just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. Here it's third and three. Operating from the gun, Manning. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. Robert Ayers coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Now Manning, got to have this one. And this is incomplete. The Giants go on fourth, but come up empty. And the Bucs are going to take over with excellent field position to boot. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. Go, go, go. 
Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Eventually wrangled down before reaching the 20, but a strong run. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who, who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up a fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no game. So they'll turn to the kicker again. He's been a busy man thus far. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. And Folk's kick is good. And that will push this lead up to 20 now. So it's three more points, and that widens things out even further here in the fourth. Hey, in this league, you can never have too much. So if you're in range, grab the three whenever you can. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This one taken from the seven. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And here comes the Giants offense back out onto the field. And on that last drive, Went for it on fourth, turned it over. A good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what you happened there. you think that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. And his throw is incomplete. He was looking for his big target, Brandon Marshall. And it's second down. When we talk with people about what we think the most important quality for an NFL quarterback to possess, what do people usually say? Arm strength. Uh, he showed the arm strength there. Yeah, pretty good bullet pass he threw, but he wasn't accurate, was he? No. Listen, you like mobility, but accuracy, first and foremost, is what a quarterback needs. He didn't possess it on that play. Back to the air on second down. It's Manning. Right back for Marshall. This time it's complete. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. The Giants on third down. They've converted just twice and have had plenty of opportunities. This is third and four. Now Manning, and he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. They're already slim hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down.
Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. That's where they'll take over. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent. And now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. Buccaneer offense set to take over again. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns so the offense now dealing with a second and seven and he'll give it here to his running back and he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage no gain on the play and it's going to bring up a third down the fourth quarter here they've got the lead they want to keep it on the ground that's what they're doing Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. On third down, Winston. And Winston lost the football. And his guys will set up shop at midfield at the 50-yard line. by the weather of course the rain coming down Charles can you maybe when you're carrying that football grip it too tight in the rain I think that you can and it's such a delicate balance too because when you grip it so tight sometimes it'll slip out from your body you squeeze it too hard and it'll pop out on its own I've actually had running backs talk to me about that that when they've tried too hard even in perfect conditions the ball gets away from them they've got to find that good balance carrying it firmly yet at the same time under control Looks like the defense in press coverage here. So the fumble recovery, and now Manning runs through the contact. Caught left side, it's Beckham. And he's brought down. Personal foul, placement, defense. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. Through it. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. It's a gain of five on the play, and that'll make this a second down. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Manning to 
throw on second down. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Justin Pugh, the left guard that time with a flag. on the draw and he'll get it down this time to the 17. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards and that'll make it third down. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set to throw. It's Manning. And that is incomplete. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, maybe it said, forget about the sticks. We want six. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Complete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Buccaneers defense holds and they get the football back. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They have the big lead here late. They protected their home turf well, didn't they? They certainly did, partner. And just think about how good that feels because every team has a goal when they start the year to win at home. All right? And sometimes you don't win all of them, but they managed to get that done today. Just think about your routine stays the same. Everything's familiar. You feel right going into the game, and they translated that into a win. They did indeed. They protected the home field, and now the final stages. And to give this time to the tailback. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. But it was stopped on that play. We said plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. On second down, Martin. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. One yard, the official pick up there, so it's going to set up third and nine. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation and taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. On third down. It's Rodgers, and he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Were you I, one of those guys that's skeptical, skeptical about it, or a little did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice, got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly. Wise beyond his years. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Bucks are winners here as we say so long from Tampa.